Some of the tracks, um, they're not long, some are longer than others, uh, are engaging with some of the great issues that were convulsing the church, 1540s, 1550s. In particular, concerning uh, the church and the sacraments. And I found Calvin's writings on the church and the Lord's Supper in particular, uh, mm. illuminating for me, um, helping me to understand just how, how rich um, the place of the sacraments has in the life of the church in a way that is often not appreciated today. But there's one tr tract in particular, uh, I think 1543, concerning the church, where he says something that would surprise, I think, many Protestants and many Reformed Christians when he writes this dedicatory preface to Charles V, the Emperor, and says, you need to understand what the Reformation was about. Uh -huh. It's about, first of all, the recovery of the true worship of God. Mm. That would surprise many people. I think they would say, well, it's about justification. Yeah, and Calvin yeah, goes on to say, and how we are rightly reconciled to God in Christ. But when you understand why Calvin said that the great issue is how God is to be worshiped, I think it casts a whole new light on how you read Calvin and how you read actually the other magisterial uh -huh. reformers, uh -huh. that they had this passion that God should be worshiped according to his revelation. Yes. Yeah. And that was something that really impacted me um, in, in yeah. past years. Yeah. The letters are, are, are superb. Um, uh, Calvin's intimate concern for people of all kinds when he writes to kings, queens, archdukes, yes. peasants. Um, martyrs to be. Martyrs to be. There's, there's a series of letters, there's three I think, writing to five men on death row in Chambéry. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just find it so moving that he writes to these men and, and you can almost sense the, the compassion, and yet the deep concern he has, brothers, come what may, hold fast yes. to Christ. Yes. Yeah. I actually have a letter of Calvin's, it's one of 10 copies in the world. The letter was discovered about 12 years ago in Geneva, uh -huh. a bibliotheque. It was sold at Sotheby's, I think for $80,000. <sighs> a friend of mine was given one of 10 copies and she insisted that at my 10th anniversary in Cambridge I would have this Is that right? This letter. That's lovely. Calvin's sitting in the consistory and someone bursts in. Now Calvin is writing a notarised account of this saying Pierre Vacher's brother has plunged a dagger into his stomach and so Calvin immediately leaves the consistory, which is interesting in itself because if he'd been a Roman Catholic priest, he wouldn't have gone to someone who's committed a mortal sin. So Calvin rushes and he's telling um, the magistrate what he did. He, he sees the dagger sticking in Vashe's brother's stomach. Calvin's first words were, even now, if you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of your sin, he will forgive you and bring you to his eternal glory. Vashe's brother replies, says Calvin, I have done so, but I pressed him again. Have you truly repented of your sin and cast yourself alone upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Vashe's brother replies, I have. And then Calvin says, the barber arrived, so I left. The barber being the surgeon. Yeah. And so I have this uh, framed uh, letter and it just... For me, it just conjures up someone who, in the midst of the, the details and the, the important aspects of running the life of a church, hears of a need, he rushes to it. What's his first concern? Uh -huh. To help this man in his extremity prepare for eternity. Yeah. Now, all of the letters are not quite as vivid as that, are they? But they, they do deal with many different things in the life of the church. In Calvin's life, 
He's responding often to situations where simply to confess Jesus Christ as Saviour yes. is to place yourself in tremendous yes. harm. Yes. And these letters to the young men who were eventually martyred? And it's the internationalism. You know, he's writing to Poland, to England. Um, you know, he writes to the Duke of Somerset, please, please tell Her Majesty uh, that Knox's treatise had nothing to do yes. with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> if I'd only known, um, we wouldn't have allowed the censor to pass it in Geneva. But he's writing to his whole network of people, encouraging them and seeking to um, help them to stand fast yes. in the face of yeah. not just opprobrium and opposition, but for many of yes. them, the certainty of death. A real passion for Christ and the gospel that often people don't associate with him, probably. That, that's, that's the heart of Calvin. It, you know, if someone said to me, what was he like about Calvin? He loves Jesus Christ. Uh -huh.